What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to find limits from a graph. And I'm going to try to cover as many cases as I can. So the first case that we'll look at here is when we have a function that is continuous. And real quick, a function is continuous when I could draw the entire function without lifting my pen off the page. So let's say we focus in on this point here. And this is the point we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going up two units. So if I wanted to find the limit as x approaches 5, and we'll say that this is a graph of f of x, so if I wanted to find this limit here, all I have to do is just identify the y value. Because once again, when your graph is completely connected, then finding the limit is as easy as identifying the y value. And in this case, the y value at x equals 5 is 2. So that would be our limit. But once again, that's the easiest case for limits. Then the next case that I want to look at here is what if you have something where you have a hole in the graph. So I'm going to just draw this a little bit different. So now what I want is I'm going to have something, we have this point here. But now let's say the function is not defined at this location. There's a hole in the graph here. And this is the point 2, and it's going up 1, 2, 3. So in this case here, if I wanted to find what is the limit as x approaches 2 of this function, then once again, it's as simple as identifying the y value. Even though there's a hole here, we're going to say there's a hole at the point 2, 3, but that y value is still our limit. And they could even try to throw you off by throwing in a function value. And let's say the function f of x at x equals 2 is defined to be 5. So even though the function value at 2 is equal to 5, the limit is where we're heading towards when we approach from the left side and the right side. So you can look here. When we head in from the left, we're heading towards a y value of 3. And when we head in from the right on f of x as x approaches 2, we're also heading to a y value of 3. So the limit in this case is once again heading towards where the hole in the graph is. But the function value is more of just a distraction. So that would be the second case. When you have a hole in the graph, sometimes we'll call that a removable discontinuity. But now the next case that I want to look at here is what happens when we have a jump in the graph. So this time around, I'm going to draw things just a little bit different. But now let's say our function were to look like this. So let's say we have just some segment here like this, and we have another segment over here going out this way. So the first y value that we could notice here is this is going up to a y value of 1, and the second one is going up to a y value of 3. So in this case here, if I wanted to find the limit as x approaches 2, in this case the limit would actually not exist. And the reason behind this, we have the limit as x approaches 2 on the left side of f of x, well, if we approach 2 from the left, we're coming in this way. We pay attention to which y value are we heading towards, and we're heading towards a y value of 3. So our left side limit is 3, because once again, when we approach 2 from the left side, we're going in this way. We're heading towards this y value. But if we approach on the right side, you could see this time around, when we approach 2 from the right, we're heading to a y value of 1. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of f of x, in this case, is just going to be equal to 1. So anytime you have two different limits, when you're approaching from the left side and the right side, this means the limit in general, the limit as x approaches 2 in general of f of x does not exist. Okay, But what I like to look for when I'm identifying limits from a graph is I look for a jump in the graph, and that automatically tells me the limit is not going to exist at this place. One of the big ideas we should get down here is that when the left side and right side limits are equal, that means the limit in general is equal. Otherwise, when the left and right side limits are not equal, we say the limit doesn't exist. Okay, so once again, this statement here, if either of these are not true, if the left and right limits are not equal, that means the limit does not exist. So the next case that we should look at here is what happens when we have asymptotes in the graph. So now I'm just going to draw this a little bit different. So we're going to look at a case now where we have, we'll start off with vertical asymptotes, and then we'll talk about how to deal with the horizontal asymptote case. So let's just get this stuff out of the way. And we're going to draw this now once again so that we have an asymptote in the graph. So let's say I have an asymptote here going along, whoops, a little sloppy. But we'll just say this is a vertical asymptote at the point x equals, or at the line x equals 3. 
So now if I just draw anything here, let's say the first graph we look at goes like this. Okay, so here's our function f of x. Well, a few things I could consider is that the limit as x approaches 3 from the left side of f of x, I just have to follow this very carefully. If I'm approaching 3 on the left side, I'm following this portion of the graph, and I'm getting closer and closer to x equals 3, but on the left side, and you could notice the graph is heading down towards negative infinity. So in this case here, my graph, my limit is heading towards negative infinity because the graph is heading south this way. If I wanted to investigate what is the limit as x approaches 3 from the right side of f of x, well, in this case here, now we're following, we'll just uh, switch colors here. So we're going to approach 3 from the right side, which means we're looking at this portion of the graph. And you can see this side of the graph is heading up towards positive infinity. So if we use this idea once again, the limit as x approaches 3 in general of f of x does not exist because the graph is heading to two different places. On one side of 3, we're going down to negative infinity. On the right side of 3, we're heading up towards positive infinity. So now one other case we'll look at with the vertical asymptote is when either side of the graph is heading to the same place. So let's say this time around, if I erase this, and this time around, let's say the graph looked something like this. So now it's going up here like this. Well, in this case, what that would change is now the limit as x approaches 3 on the left side. We just think about this very carefully. The limit as x approaches 3 on the left side is also heading up to positive infinity. So this limit as x approaches 3 from the left would change to positive infinity, which would tell us that the limit as x approaches 3 in general now, this we could say is heading towards positive infinity. Okay. Technically, we could say that this limit does not exist because infinity is not a number. It's a direction. But for some calculus classes, they will be more interested in saying which direction is the graph headed because it helps you describe what the graph is going to look like when you investigate these limits. So now the next case that we should look at here is what I call the trivial case. So sometimes when you're going through limits, they'll ask you to evaluate a limit that is sometimes confusing because there's technically no graph to actually investigate. So I like to call this the trivial case where there's no actual function to follow. So let's say I get a sketch here of square root x. So here's the graph of y equals square root x. So going here like this. So, uh, and this is not drawn to scale. I'm just getting a rough sketch here. And let's say I wanted to find the limit as x approaches negative 3 of square root x. Well, right away, I would say this limit does not exist because if you look out here at negative 3, the domain of square root x is going from including 0 out to positive infinity. So since negative 3 is not in the domain of the function, right away I could say that this limit does not exist. And when I'm looking at the graph, there's simply no graph to follow out here for me to actually investigate a limit. Now, the closest we could get to this graph would be if I wanted to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of square root x. Now I actually do have something to follow. And as I get closer to 0 on the right side, you see the limit, my y value, is heading towards 0. Remember, when you're investigating limits, you're always looking for the y value, at least until you get to calculus 3 and you know beyond. So the next thing that's worth looking at here is what happens if I wanted to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of square root x? Well, once again, the left side of 0 is not in the domain of the function. There is no graph to the left of 0, so there's nothing actually to follow. So this is once again that trivial case, and I could say that this limit does not exist. Okay, so if I were approaching from the right side, I could say the limit is 0, but if I approach from the left side, once again, negative numbers are not in the domain of square root x, because we can't take the square root of negative numbers in the real number system, so that limit would not exist. Now, the last case that I want to look at here, before we look at some mixed examples, are what happens when we have horizontal asymptotes. So, in this case, it's a little bit, you have to be a little bit careful when you read them, but this last case isn't so bad. But once we look through this last case, we'll have all the tools that we need to look at some of these mixed examples here where we're combining multiple rules. 
Let's just scroll back up. All right, so now this is the last case, the horizontal asymptote case. Let's say we have something that looks something like this. Okay, so we'll look at a case where we actually have two horizontal asymptotes. So I have a function going here like this. And let's just make that last part a little bit neater. And out here, we're just going to assume it's going to go to this height. And let's say this is 5 and this is negative 5. So, and I'll call this g of x. So if I wanted to find what is the limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x, when I'm looking for limits at infinity, x approaching infinity tells you to keep going to the right and see what y value are you headed towards. So in this case here, if I just keep heading to the right, I look at my y values. My y values are getting cut off by this height of y equals 5. So in this case, my limit would be equal to 5 because that's acting as a ceiling as x goes to positive infinity. The graph is heading towards a ceiling with a height of 5 units. Now, if I look at the other side here and I look at what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x, now instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to the left like this. And when I follow the graph this way going all the way to the left, I say, what is my floor? What is the lowest y value that I'm heading towards? And now I'm heading towards a y value of negative 5. So in this last case here, that would be our limit. Okay, but now that we've looked at the majority of the cases that you would run into, now let's take a look at a few mixed examples. All right, for this first example here, now we have a mix of the cases that we saw earlier. So the first thing we'll look at for part A is what is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left side? So the first thing I would want to do here is go over to x equals negative 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to approach negative 2 coming in from the left. So that means we're heading in this way from the left side, heading towards this hole here. And just know there's a hole in the graph at the point negative 2, 3. So once again, when you're looking for the limit, you're really just looking for what is the y value that you're heading towards. And in this case, we're heading towards a y value of 3. So for the next case here, we want to look at the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side. So what we're going to do is we're heading over to negative 2, but now we're going to move from right to left. And as we come in from right to left here, you can see, once again, we're heading towards a y value of 3. So in the second case here for part b, our limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side is equal to 3. Remember, this function value up here, I could just say f of negative 2 is equal to 5. This point up here is a distraction. When you're looking at limits, you just want to see where is the graph heading towards. And this point all the way up here in space is just a distraction. So this would be our limit. And once again, as we said earlier, when the left side limit is equal to the right side limit, that tells you that the limit in general as x approaches negative 2 is just equal to 3. But if we wanted to extend this a bit further, we could say our function is not continuous at negative 2 because the limit is not equal to the function value. We would call this a removable discontinuity. So the next location we want to look at here is what happens when we take the limit as x approaches 3 from the left side. So now here's x equals 3, and if we move in from left to right, we're getting closer to 3 on the left side. We're heading towards this point here, and this is the point 3, 2. So once again, the limit is the y value, so we're heading towards the point 3, 2. So our limit as x approaches 3 from the left side is going to be equal to 2. But now when we want to find the limit as x approaches 3 on the right side, we're going to be moving in right to left, and we're heading towards this hole in the graph, and there's a hole in the graph at the point 3, negative 2. So our limit as x approaches 3 from the right side is equal to negative 2. But now to answer the last question, we want to find the limit as x approaches 3 in general, but remember, if the right side limit and the left side limit are not equal, and in this case, the left and right limits are not equal, that tells us the limit as x approaches 3 does not exist. Because the limit is heading to two different places on either side. Okay, so just remember, anytime you have a jump in the graph, automatically the limit is not going to exist when you have a jump. Okay, for this last question here, we're going to look at more cases. And for part A, we want to find the limit as x approaches positive 2 from the left side. So if we look here, notice we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So when we approach 2 from the left side, we're going to follow the part of the graph that's to the left of the asymptote. And notice this part of the graph here is heading down towards negative infinity. 
So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side, this is heading towards negative infinity. Now notice I'm using an arrow here because technically negative infinity is not a number. So I don't want to say equals negative infinity, but this is just communicating that the limit is heading towards negative infinity. Now, I'll switch over to part D because this corresponds to the same asymptote. And if we want to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side, now we're going to the right side of the asymptote, and we're going to follow this portion of the graph. And notice, this part of the graph is also heading down towards negative infinity. So we could write over here, this limit is heading towards negative infinity. So if I wanted to add in, let's say, a part G, I could say that the limit as x approaches positive 2 in general is heading towards negative infinity because the left and right side limits are heading to the same place. But all we were required to look for was just the left and right side limits. So now we want to look at what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x. And notice now, this is telling us to keep going to the left. And as we just continuously go to the left, notice the graph is getting cut off. There's a ceiling at a y value of y equals 3. This graph is not going above the line y equals 3. We have a horizontal asymptote here, so that tells us the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x is going to be equal to positive 3. But now if we look, what is the limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x? And notice if we investigate this end behavior, as x goes to infinity, just notice the graph is just heading up. It's just continuously going up. There is a horizontal asymptote here, but this graph went completely through it, and it's just heading up, up, up to infinity. So that tells us the limit as x goes to infinity, if we look at this arrow here, is telling us the y values are also going to infinity. And now the last set of questions here to look at, what is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left side? So in this case, this is one of those cases where it could be so easy that it's difficult. But notice in the neighborhood of x equals negative 2, the graph is completely connected. So when the graph is completely connected, this portion of the graph is continuous, then all you have to do is just look at the point, and the point is negative 2, 2. So the limit in this case is just the y value. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left is equal to positive 2, and also the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right is equal to positive 2. If I wanted to add in another part, so we have EFG, let's say we call this part H, I could say the limit as x approaches negative 2 of g of x is equal to 2 because the left and right side limits are equal and equal to 2. Okay, well this is going to wrap up this limits from a graph video. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.